الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين Praise be to Allah the Lord, Cherisher and Sustainer of the world The most gracious, the most merciful, the master of the day of judgment All praise is due to Allah and Allah's peace and blessings be upon his last messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam His pure families, his companions and all those who follow them with righteousness and good deeds until the day of judgment Amen Dear brothers and sisters, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum wa salam wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh. The main goal of creating us in this world is to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. True? That is your relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the main reason for the differences between the different tribes and nations in this world is to know each other. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in the Holy Quran. And we made you into tribes and nations that you may know one another. This is the basis in Islam for the civilized interaction between all human beings in this world. Try to get to know each other. This is directly mentioned by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Holy Quran. And there are many bases for that, many principles. And in short, we can summarize it in the four most important principles of this interactions or civilized coexistence between people in this earth. First and foremost is the kindness and goodness and treatment. This is called in Arabic al-birr. The second one is justice. Should be based on justice. And the third one is avoiding any kind of harm neither by actions nor by speech and the opposite of that is reaching out for them with everything that is good in speech and in action we'll bring proofs for each and every one of these inshallah from the hadith of the messenger Muhammad and the verses in the holy quran now the uh, first uh, point about speech Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forbade us from insults and speech of hate, hatred, and bad speech, and an argument. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala repeated that in the Holy Quran many often. So much so that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forbade the Muslims from insulting the idols that the disbelievers believe in. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, do not insult what they are worshipping beside Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So that they will not insult Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in return. That is not the way for people to live. You insult their uh, deities, what they believe in as idols, they will insult uh, you, God forbid. There will be an injustice in Quran. So this is the concept of avoiding this tension. That is the first speech. Second one is avoiding harm towards others. And this is clarified by the Messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in one beautiful hadith, the definition of a Muslim is one from whom people are safe from harm neither by his speech nor by his action the definition of muslim given by the messenger muhammad is this narration someone who does not harm others neither by speech nor by action by the way someone might say that the hadith says a muslim is one from whom muslims are safe that is one narration yes in the other narration of an nasai people are safe Nas, all, everyone. So it didn't mention only the Muslims. So this is a general rule as the Messenger Muhammad Sallallahu put. Now, the opposite of that is to do good to them and to speak to them good. And the Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala clarified in the Holy Quran, He said, and speak to people in a nice manner. وَقُولُوا لِلنَّاسِ husna." And say to people a word of kindness, a word of goodness, a word of grace. Speak with them in a very nice and gentle manner. So he didn't say, speak only with the Muslims or the believers. He says to people, this is your dealing to the people. And uh, we have clarified the concept very early on. Before two years or so, we dedicated a very lengthy speech about the concept of nice speech in Islam. And we have mentioned that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guided Musa alayhi salam and Harun alayhi salam, messenger and prophet from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to speak to Fir'aun in a nice manner and a kind manner. That is a Muslim. As a Muslim, you deal with people with the morals of Islam, not with their morals. 
So a bad person, you don't deal with him according to his morals. You deal with him according to your morals. Muslims. This is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala taught us this. And in action, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also highlighted this. He said, repel the evil action of a person by a good deed from you. Someone is doing an evil action or bad things to you, how do you repel that? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, repel it with something that is good. So much so that the person with whom and you there is enmity, he will be like an intimate friend, close friend. This is how you should deal with them. That is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is teaching us regarding the speech and the birth. Now, the concept of birr, goodness, and justice. These are combined by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in one verse. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned in Surah Al-Mumtahana. He said, Allah Almighty does not forbid you regard dealing with others, the disbeliever. Provided that they haven't fought you for your religion. The fight between, they are not fighting you because you are Muslims. And they haven't expelled you from your homes, taking your land or your homes. So they are not criminals, not people who are doing injustice or crimes. Allah Almighty does not forbid you towards them that you deal with them with goodness and justice. And verily, Allah Almighty loves those who do justice. So this verse, very clear, the criteria between where is the limit of dealing with non-Muslims? said, as long as they are not criminal, not fighting you for your religion. They are not doing injustice. That's it. So the general guidance is what? Deal with them with kindness and goodness. Kindness in this verse was explained by the uh, scholars. Say kindness in this verse or the bear is to do any good deed that you can to help them make their life happy and easy. And they mention examples. If there is an injustice upon them, you have to help them to remove this injustice. If someone is oppressing them, you have to stop the oppressor. If someone of them is in need, you have to help him in his need. If someone is poor, you have to help him with your own money and support. If someone is hungry, you have to feed him, share with him food. And if someone does not have clothes, share with him your cloth and so on. They mention the rights of non-Muslims upon Muslims in a Muslim society. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not forbid you. To understand the context of this verse, this is very important. Because there are verses in the Holy Quran of fighting. So how do you combine between them? Those are verses of war against criminals. And these are verses for normal dealing with people. This was revealed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Surah Al-Mumtahana. Surah Al-Mumtahana happened when one of the Sahaba, he wrote to the disbelievers of Mecca, warning them that the Messenger Muhammad sallam, is preparing to attack them. So he sent a warning to them. That is... So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed that as a Muslim, you should be careful about what kind of information that you are sharing with, uh, with others and the disbelievers. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala warned, mentioned the example of Ibrahim alayhi salam and his people and the enmity that was between them. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala established these examples, the clarification, then he said, Allah Almighty is not forbidding you regarding those who are peaceful. Allah Almighty does not forbidding you, forbid you in these, with these elements regarding the peaceful people. We are speaking about the criminals. So that nobody will misunderstand it. How beautiful is that? So in the same surah, in the same chapter, immediately after this, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Allah Almighty does not forbid you regarding the, those who are not fighting you, those who have not expelled you from your homes. The rest, normal people. You have to deal with them with goodness and justice. And the next verse, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala clarified it. Allah Almighty is forbidding you regarding those who fight you for your religion and those who expelled you from your homes and those who insisted that you support them in injustice. That is the criteria that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned. Anyone who helped them with that, he is doing injustice himself. So you have to be careful about the criteria that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala And that is why in practice the Messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam himself practiced this. Non-Muslims lived throughout Islamic history till today within Muslim societies. At the time of the Messenger Muhammad Sallallahu he gave them the oath and treaty or pact of protection. Protection. 
And we have many examples of that. The, one of the famous examples is the pact or covenant given to the Christian of Najran. Najran was a very large uh, tribe in South Arabia, between Yemen and Saudi Arabia nowadays, south of Saudi Arabia. So the Messenger Muhammad wrote for them a treaty. He says, as for Najran and the surroundings of Najran, they have the protection of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the protection of the Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And then he explained this protection. He said the protection for them in their lives, in their selves, and in their money, and in their land, and in their religion. The one who is present and the one who is absent, not only those who signed or attended, every one of them. The one who is present and the one who is absent and in their tribe, anyone who belongs to their tribe and in their religious places of worship. That is the pact of the Messenger Muhammad to the Christian of Najran in Arabia. See? How beautiful is that example from the Messenger Muhammad there were no examples of peaceful tolerance, coexistence like that in the Islamic history throughout, from day one in Islam. Till today, despite the few crazy people who might do otherwise. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is teaching us very clearly. The Messenger Muhammad SAW actually warned from doing any kind of injustice to a Mu'ahid. Mu'ahid is a non-Muslim living within the Muslim society. He entered within that society or this was his place. And he is part of that area, either by a visa or by residence or whatever. He is now living within the Muslim society. The Messenger Muhammad وسلم, warned and he said, anyone who does an injustice to Mu'ahid, a Muslim living within the Muslim society, or belittle him, insult him or mock him or something like that, or take some, some of his rights injustly, for example, lower his wage or does not give him his rights, or take anything from him without his peaceful, full contest, consent, without his agreement, without his permission, then I will be his opponent in the hereafter. SubhanAllah. The one who will defend this person in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the one who will stand against the Muslims who did an injustice to a Mu'ahid, to a non-Muslim, will be the Messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa himself. He said, no, I will be his defendant there. I'll be the opponent of this injustice person will be the messenger Muhammad <coughs> and of course the worst type of an injustice is killing an innocent person and that is why the messenger Muhammad also highlighted this there are many verses about the protection of human life but one of them the messenger Muhammad is specifically about non-muslims living within the muslims specifically and the messenger Muhammad said anyone who kills a mu'ahid non-muslim living muslim anyone who kills a mu'ahid will never smell the smell the fragrance of paradise never smell the fragrance of paradise and it can be spilled from the length of 40 years 40 years before you reach the gates of paradise you can start smell its beautiful fragrance the messiah muhammad said anyone who kills a mu'ahid will never smell the fragrance of paradise so this concept of fruitful coexistence and peaceful cooperation and coexistence, this is one of the main goals in Islam, to establish peace within the society, to establish harmony, establish human interactions, knowing each other. If Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wanted all people to be believers, they will. That is why there are no compulsion in religion. It's not allowed to force someone to become a Muslim. And that is why the non-Muslims who live there, they are still living till today, and nobody forces them against their religion. Still, in some countries, in some Islamic countries, there are very large minorities, 10%, 15%, 20%. And they have been living with Muslims under Muslim rule for the past 1,400 years. That is the attitude of Islam. They have their rights, they are protected as, and they participate uh, normally as long as they are peaceful, and they are not doing an injustice. Anyone who does an injustice, he will be penalized. Anyone who does an injustice, he will be judged. Muslim or non-Muslim. This is not linked with me, Muslim or non. You do an injustice, you will be persecuted and punished by law. 
So this is the concept in Islam. The differences are not there. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to uh, teach us and guide us inshallah to understand these very important elements. Final point is about our days there are new means of communication and interconnections between people and especially the electronics one. And the same rules do apply to that at all. So you have to be careful about this. Whatever you write, Whenever you are arguing with non-Muslims, discussing something with non-Muslims, you have to observe the Islamic guidelines. You have to observe the Islamic morals. Regardless, whatever that person might be doing, he's saying something bad, he's saying... So either you keep your cool and speak with them in a gracious way, or stop the discussion and the argument if they are not interested. So the concept is to deal with them with the morals of Islam, with the guidance of Islam. That is the important point. And uh, finally, about the uh, initiative of Dubai police to warn people about the misuse of mobiles and uh, electronics, especially while driving. This is very important to protect yourself and protect others. It has been proven scientifically that when someone is busy with his mobiles or reading or writing or uh, checking something, sometimes he is not seeing the road for three to five seconds, complete three to five seconds. This is very lengthy and it's enough to God forbid cause uh, harm to himself and to others which is forbidden in Islam. We pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to guide us to his divine truth and protect us in this world and the hereafter. We pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us good for ourselves, our families, our neighbors and society then all of humanity. Ameen. Wa sallallahu ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam. Jazakumullah.